And if you start thinking about your stereo image, not only frequency domain, but also in time domain, you will get a key to a whole new world. This video is sponsored by GP Audio, a revolutionary idea to use GPUs instead of CPUs for your plugins. More about them later in the video. So stereo image refers to perceived spatial location of the sound both literally and in depth. Let's listen to our imaginary band. Do you see how everything is just in the middle? So we have mono stereo image. Let's change the stereo image by panning the things a little bit around. Listen to the guitars. And then the bass. So at the beginning, we had a very tight image, everything was on the mono, and in the second example, things were panned quite heavily and the stereo image was quite wide. For producers and audio engineers, that single dimensional spatial image is never enough. We will introduce another dimension, an X dimension, where we have the frequency range, and on top of that, we will have a second Y axis that will define the width of each frequency range. So every instrument will be unique depending on how we use the effects and where the instrument sits in the mix. Let's give an example of how we can actually use frequencies and width and enhance the sound or the instruments that you are looking for. If you take the same drums again, we will have these different frequency bands or the ranges. This screen right over here, if it is in the middle, it's mono signal. And if it's splashed around, the sound is more stereo. Here, exactly the same thing. One is mono, zero is stereo. What you need to do, focus on zero to one. We are having quite mono drums. The trick of having frequencies like this, you can actually decide which frequencies that you will have wider. Use this plugin to open up the sound. Let's say we want to open up the hi hats. A bit more on the mid highs. So this helps you to change the stereo image of a specific frequency rather than whole instrument. Before we continue to dynamic stereo image, let's understand first static stereo image. The static basically means that the stereo image of a track stays the same. We predefine the placement of each instrument and the instrument and overall stereo image will stay the same. It doesn't mean that there will be some dynamic panning going on in the track. For example, if you have hi-hats panning right and left all the time, it still wouldn't change the overall image because it's always doing the same thing. Let's take a look at few examples of these type of static images. The first example is something that is used very widely in electronic dance music and this is the dance music triangle on the low end you will have the mono signal and in case the track is played in the mono system the low end will stay powerful going up on the upper frequencies you will open up the mix and it will get more and more stereo the reason that works so well is that our ears are more sensitive to direction once the signal gets upper on the frequency range so if you make this area really stereo we will almost trick to think that the whole track is very stereo. Probably 90% of the dance music tracks utilize exactly this stereo image in their tracks. And let me give you an example of this one. I have my own track over here so that I can avoid copyright strikes and I divide it into four different bands. I want you to take a listen first very low end. Everything is super mono second part. We are opening up a little bit. Now we are seeing a bit more stereo information. Now we are really utilizing this stereo field, right? And finally, over here, we are super stereo. Things are going slight over face, but that doesn't really matter at all. And together, see how stereo the image feels. Pretty close to one if you add all the frequencies together. Now, of course, there's only one single stereo image. There are many different static stereo images that utilize different genres, altered triangles. Same triangle, but we will see a bit bump over here, for example, for the bass, very spacious bass feeling, even though it's a small bump. Utilized by the artists like, for example, Boris Brechtja. Bubbles, this is a rock music or pop music 
common stereo image because the instruments are panned right and left and you will see these bubbles in the stereo image depending on which instrument is dominating that specific frequency. Another example would be hourglass where a lot of different instruments on top of each other. So you have to utilize some type of stereo techniques to give a space to your mix for example. Tons of different stereo images that people utilize. I'm just showing the most common ones. GPU Audio is the first startup that dedicates the unlock the usage of GPU rather than CPU for audio processing and for audio plugins, which made them one of the indie hit of this year's NAM. Up to now, all the plugins are processed via CPU. And the problem with this is we have a limited number of CPUs. So they have developed a new way to take DSP algorithms and parallel process them across a thousand of GP cores. This allows a new generation of plugins, software and even cloud-based platform to have incredible power. They open a free early access program where you can help test the tech on plugins and within a few weeks they will release their open beta. You can sign up at the link below for free. Dynamic stereo imaging basically means alternating those different type of static images during the track depending on the feelings that you are going for. Right over here we have a track regular deep house feel with deep house stereo image. While slightly stereo is still quite mono on the bottom, the kick and toms hits, they basically make the track more mono. Like these jumps and then we open up and then probably even open up more. Once we are going into the break, I want to change the mood. I want to create this dreamy state. Completely alternate my stereo image to really emphasize that feeling. I like to duplicate the instruments that I'm gonna change the stereo image because automating back and forward takes a bit too much time. First we start with panning these instruments around this one to the right. We have to counterbalance this one and we have this pluckiness. Do you see how these two creates this dreamy feel? And then we enhance this by duplicating the hats, panning around fastly with a lot of reverb. And we have duplicated the breeze bass and stop caring about low and phasing. We just want to bleak stereo image. And then vocal comes in relatively keeping in the middle like somebody's talking to you through the clouds. And then we add a little reverbs and some percussions. Take a look at our image one more time, completely different. Look at the bass, it's all over the place. If you just jump back to the normal without any breaks or anything, it may be a bit problem, but utilize something like a big break and a club, something like here. What we basically did is give enough space for our ears to adapt to the new normal. And this is just the one example. You can, for example, alter the image at the intros and outros to give a bit more different vibe to the track. And if you start thinking about your stereo image, not only frequency domain, but also in time domain, you will get a key to whole new world. The dynamic imaging is really a small piece of dynamic mixing, and that will be a part of my new mixing masterclass. Unfortunately, the day this video is published, that class is not ready yet. If you are looking this video in the future, check the description below. That link magically may appear here. And while we are talking about the mixing, I have seven steps to mix your drums. If you are looking for drum mixing, that video could be already a good start.